In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. This is the channel of truth. We're speaking the truth of God from the, the word of God. And uh, this is Pastor Susie Antun, daughter of the Most High from Rivers of Living Water. What I like about the scripture, the more you read it, the more you find the, it's like a puzzle and pieces are all together. And this is where God gave me the gift to put together or to see uh, like a code into the word of God. And uh, I see it easier. The more you do it, the more you find it easier. So the unity of the scripture, the beginning of the book and the end of the book are all one and it's written by the Holy Spirit. So uh, I just finding that a little bit interesting uh, that was on the news, the spiritual literacy. And means the spiritual literacy, the ability to read the signs written in the text of our own experience. It allow us to recognize that the whole world is charged with sacred meaning. The more you read the Bible, the more you know it. Like if you, let's say, start to play one of those puzzles, you know, that children puzzles or things like this, you know, and you start to do it, the more you do it, the more you, you unlock it easily. So the Holy Spirit is the, the, uh, the author. You start to know him. And by knowing him, um, knowing his character, you can understand more easily than just, so I give you an emotional intelligence. Uh, it's it's a full of range during reading the word of God. It changes you. That's the beauty of it. It's not like you read a book of philosophy or uh, whatever. No, it, 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 it changes you. And there is feeling in you who change. You have compassion, your devotion. You, you have an enthusiasm that is not passion for, for life and for helping people. You have forgiveness. You have kindness and love. This is not my words. I'm just copy them from um, this uh, new things, but I found them interesting and I want to encourage you to do that. Today, I'm going to speak about a topic which I'm un, um, undealt with. Uh, and if you are a person on inheritance or whatever, this can be uh, speaking to you. But the, the thing is, I am not going to tell you. I'm going to question, question, and you have to find out for yourself. So you will excuse me if I put more questions into your heart today than give you answers. Uh, and, and that Bible verse was the, the beginning of my reading on that day. From Luke 12 and verse 13. And if you look at the Bible, Luke 12, verse 13, look like that. Uh, we found it in the English version. Uh, in the beginning, like you see, he put titles. He's speaking about the Pharisees and then have no fear, acknowledging Christ. But here he put the title for that passage of the scripture, uh, the rich, the fool, the rich who is fool. And then the next title, not to be anxious. But the thing is, we miss the beginning of the that passage of the scripture. Yeah, it was all of us are aware the, of the parable of the fool, the rich fool guy. But what led him to this question or Jesus, why did he say that parable to the man? So there was a man here, the story, and one of the company said unto him, Master, some man came to, to Jesus and said to him, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. This is the question. Speak to my brother that he will in, divide the inheritance with me. And of course, you found like, I found the answer of Jesus very, very, very uh, weird, very strange, because the character of Jesus is the character of the Father, and what the Father is doing, the Son is doing. But Jesus' answer was very, very strange. And the thing which is even stranger, that when I, I found the question like this, and I want to share it, I don't have answer for you. So I start to Google to try to find some people who take that passage of the scripture and uh, explore it or put a commentary or uh, meditate on it. I didn't find any. <laughs> and that's very strange because the money is a big idol. And, and, and you know, the more you talk about it, you more understand what is in life. So he is a man who come to Jesus and he said to him, Master, speak to my brother that he divides the inheritance of me and the answer was of Jesus he said to him man man who made me a judge or a divider over you <laughs> how can this be I found it very strange 
But Jesus is the judge. We know that the one who's going to judge really the whole world is Jesus. And the division and all that, that was God the Father. He's doing that division from the beginning till the end. But then Jesus started to speak about the 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 parable of the rich guy. It's exactly like when you find, you know, that guy was telling uh, to Jesus something. And then Jesus started to tell him about the parable of uh, the good Samaritan. Who is my neighbor? So that's the same story. But the question, who is my neighbor? He was not really, the, the story is not about the good Samaritan, but we like to preach about the good Samaritan. We like to preach about the rich who is full. But what is before then and lead us to that question and what is after that, that's exactly the scenario or where that uh, fall, the story of the rich fool. I'm not gonna reach, uh, preach about the rich fool today because I'm sure that you heard hundreds of preaching over this. But here is something very interesting. And he said unto him, and he means Jesus, said unto him to the men. And the next verse, and he said unto them, to them, it means the people. So something the Lord said to the guy who come with this question, who want his inheritance, and something to the people. And he, and he said to him, who made me a judge or a divider? I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to judge, and I'm not divide. But... Um, he said unto them, now take heed and be aware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not of abundance of things which he possess. So here is, we do not know if that brother is on the good side or the bad side. Is he one who is robbing his brother or the one who is being robbed? Of course, it's obvious he coming to ask for his inheritance. It means like his inheritance was taken from him. And that's why he come and asked the master, master for that. And Jesus took the opportunity, but he will not divide for him. He will not give him the chair or the division of his inheritance. And it does not mean that he is asking for something which is not his. It is his, but the Lord will not do that this, this, this division. Um, but then he said to the people about be careful of the um, uh covered like you have a heart who desire the things of others that's poisoned heart and then he said to them the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he started to share the story and he thought within himself saying what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits he has plenty of things and he said this was I'll, I'll do I will pull down my bonds and be greater and then I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And then the, the voice of the Lord, and my, I said to my, fa, my soul, soul, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry, be happy, enjoy life. But God said unto him, you fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. Those things that you collect, uh, which you have provided, where are they going to go? And we are stuck into this message. But here is um, the other um, wisdom. Verse 21. So is he that lay up treasure for himself is not rich towards God. But the second uh, idea after that or second title after that, do not be anxious. And he's coming here and taking the lilies. Consider the lilies, you know, it's all similar, but I'm just taking the lilies. How they will grow, they toll not, and they spin not. And yet I say unto you, Solomon in his glory was not arid or uh, dressed like one of these. So here is the, the, the wisdom of don't be anxious, don't, be, don't worry. If you take your inter inheritance, don't worry. The lilies are never get less dressed or uh, people will not have to worry about this. Uh, and just be careful of covetousness. So today I'm not going to really, like I said, give you an uh, answer. The question here, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance. And then he said, do not be anxious. But Jesus was not gentle with the guy. He didn't answer him gently or pitifully or whatever. Um uh, but we have here certain verses.
like in Roman 2, 1, what he's saying. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O men, whosoever you are, that judge. For wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. So be careful of your heart, no doubt, judge your brother. Maybe he needs the money more than you. Who knows? For you that judge does the same thing. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to the to truth against them that they commit such things. And, and think of this, all men that judge them which do such thing and does the same, you shall escape of the judgment of God. It means here that God is still in control. He will uh, still have to, he said to him, who made me a judge or a divider? So it's two things here. God will judge. Will he not ju judge the earthly things or is he only judging the eternal and the final things? That's an important question for you to answer. Will he divide, you know, the things between men? So someone is stealing from his boss or doing uh, things for his wife and taking from her their things or whatever, or from her husband, I do not know, or from his parents. I do not know anyone. Will God interfere into those activities on the earth? Or will we leave this all to the final judgment because he will judge the word of God is say to him, to us here, that you shall escape the judgment of God. Do you think you're too clever that you escape judgment of God? No, you won't. Or despise the riches of his goodness and for, uh, forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God is just to lead you to repentance. So if he's not executing judgment on you today, fear more. Because he will judge you, he will judge you. But how he judge you and when, that's the question. And here you can see it, that you shall, do you think that you will escape of the judgment of God? No, you won't. Uh, the Lord say, I am the judge. He said, uh, I'll, I'll the one who make revenge, uh, uh, leave it to me. That's in the word of God. I, I uh, the one who do it. So we leave sometimes our right because God is the righteous judge. He take things and he do it into a righteous way. And he do not want by his mercy and love to lose anyone, but he will judge anyway. So what is that attitude of the Lord Jesus toward that young, to that man who asked for um, uh, an intervention? Look to me like when um, John the Baptist sent to Jesus and he said, are you the Messiah? And he was trying to tell him, I'm your cousin. Are you going to leave me here to die into the prison and you will not intervene? I'm going to die. You know, they're going to kill me or hang me or whatever. He didn't know the way that he will be uh, dying. But there is death here. Jesus, I'm your cousin. And Jesus didn't intervene or didn't pitch his shoulder. He said, oh, go, go tell him uh, this is happening and this and do not be... Uh, uh, blessed who is not going to be Ya'ath uh, or Feya, which be uh, stumbled in me. So what is your position? Are you the one who are taking of your brother or are you the one who been taken from you? You're either or. Or you think God will vindicate you right now or he vindicates you into uh, age to come? Question, question, question. And like I'm telling you, you find hundreds of verses and, and preaching about the full rich, but not about the dividing of your inheritance. It's like God will not care about your inheritance on earth. We can say that, but what we see are about God, he has to think important for him. One is his people, two is the land. One is the land and two his people. There are the two main items that he care about. When he say Israel, Sometimes he talk about them people. Sometimes he talk about them as land. And you have to be able to decipher what is written after that. So you continue tribulation. I'm not going to make it too long for you. But here is the parable of the full rich that he's going to make bigger barn and store more food. But the question was really about the, the inheritance. Speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Then inheritance can be an apartment, a house, or can be a land, or whatever is of the possession. Uh, 
things are valuable. Master, speak to my brother. So, and God said to the man, this night your soul is required of you and the things that you have prepared, those will they be. So is he that he laid treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Now I just wanted to uh, take that point of the preaching and I want you please to, uh, to listen carefully to this one. Do not be anxious. After he put that one parable of the forage, do not be anxious. And he is pointing to the lilies. They don't really um, uh, consider the lilies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say you unto you that Solomon into Sonia, his glory was not added like one of them. Uh, and here is the difference between two things. There is something very, very delicate here. Between you really live a life that you care, you do not care, you're not anxious. And this is command of the Lord. And it's very helpful that you live depending on the Lord and everything come on your way. But there is danger that you misinterpret that uh, uh, parable or that part, do not be anxious and be one of the one talent. Because between not to be anxious and between the one uh, uh the one talent guy, this is gonna go to eternal hell and this one will be blessed. And the difference between them is so close that if you miss it, you're gonna be between heaven and earth and it's a big difference. That one who said uh, in, in Matthew 25, he received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you that you are hard men reaping what you didn't sow, gathering what you didn't. And I put your talent into uh, the ground. But God is giving you your talent because he wants you to multiply it and enjoy the, the function of, you see, the, the, the fruit grow or the money grow or your business grow and, and, and you meet people and you do things with them and they do things with you. That kind of interaction of life that you are blessing and blessed. And that's a little bit not much different of consider the lilies. Do not worry. You don't have to worry. So you don't have to do anything. Please, brother and sister, be very careful of the difference because they're very close to each other into the meaning. Some people think, oh, don't worry about anything. And by not worrying about anything, they are not doing anything. And by not doing anything, they bury the talents and the abilities and the gift. And one talent, I was asking a guy today, what is the one talent? He didn't really realize that one talent is your free salvation. You got that salvation of uh, Jesus, which is you can't, you know, have less than that. You have it and you didn't do anything. And those people who say, oh, once saved, you are saved. Yeah, bravo. You have that one talent. And after that, the end of that one uh, talent guy was not really um, very pleasant. So what did you do with your life and the, and the things that God entrusted you upon? Very interesting story today. I had a guy or two people together. They're coming and uh, he's a deacon in an Orthodox church and he was beer there for many years. And God called him, but he didn't respond to be a priest. And I don't know how the Lord, you know, put on me, you know, the way that I spoke to him. So are we all sinner? I said, really? Really, we all sinner? Are you a womanizer? Are you money hunger? Are you right man no i'm not ask his friend is he like this no 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 i said all right what is your sin then tell me what is your sin and then the holy spirit spoke to him said there is two people on two chapter go read are, are you reader of the bible i don't want someone who shan't for me the 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 mess and if you read the bible then you have an acceptance and understanding to the word of god and you have the language the Arabic language, Muslim need to hear the, the, the gospel from us because they don't know what's going to happen to them. And they know now that the things is very close to closure. So they want the truth. And they will not continue to listen to what they're listening. They are listening to Arab preachers, Arab speaking preachers, but not Arab preacher, but we Arab speaking and, and, and ordaining people who can preach. 
especially in the Arabic, they're very, very, very precious on that such time. I said, listen, you are a sinner. You have, you know, in chapter three, go read chapter three and chapter four of the book of John and judge for yourself. That was Nicodemus. He said, oh yeah, he was great. And so he was not great. He was one of the leaders of the law into Israel, into the, the Bible and knowing everything or the Torah. But he came to Jesus and he asked for the uh, salvation and he did get it because into the end he put himself in danger to bury the body. But what did he do with his salvation? Did he bury it like that talent that God gave to him, the knowledge of the Torah? Now you know the writer of the Torah, the Messiah. What did you do about this? And you probably are a, a pious man. Being great into the among them, you're not going to be a man who is responsible or wicked. No. But look at the ch chapter 4. The Lord went and met with a sinner lady. She had five husbands. Four husbands. The fifth is not even hers. Totally sinner. At least there is confession out of the Lord with five. What did she do? She went and, and preached to the whole city. Why do you look at your sins? Why you don't look at the glory and the anointing when it come upon you and take you to a places that you will never experience and never know that it is in there. And then we read together and I let him read it by himself. The last part of the book of Mark 16 and uh, Matthew 24, the great commission when the Lord is sending us with the anointing that when it come and you're gonna heal the sick, lay hand on the sick, speak in new tongues, with the serpents and kick out demons and all the, 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 the package. When you're ordained, you will be having this because it is granted for you tools to, to make you more accessible and more able to, to reach people. And, and then, um, you know, the guy said, oh, how many? He was thinking about it. He said, no, I'm not worried. No, you are. Don't run from this. Don't take what is given to you by God and put it in that only talent. You are saved and you put it down in the ground because there is different between Lord, whatever you want. You want me to have the inheritance? Okay. You don't want me to have the inheritance? It's okay. If you wanted me to keep the shop or the store or the business, yes. If you want to take the business and take me to another country, yes. That's different from that. But you are in an attitude and in position of heart that you are willing at all the time to work in the field of the Lord. You're not a quitter. You are a worker for the field because you wanted to see the people doing. Let's go a little bit deeper on the Old Testament because, you know, I love the Old Testament. And, and we come to um, that slide. Don't forget it in the end. Well, we have Jesus. Uh, yeah, most assuredly, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself but what he see the father doing. So was the father a divider or a judge? So Jesus said, I'm not dividing you the land or I'm not judge. And But what he see the father doing, for whatever he does, the son also does in, in the like manner. John 5. So it means... The father was never dividing the land or the piece of the inheritance or the houses, whatever. That's why Jesus said no for the man. That's your, uh, you know, conclusion. But let's see if this is what the father did. And if the father did something different, why Jesus didn't do the division and the judgment for that, uh, uh, that guy? Well, we have here a separation of first that heaven are of the Lord. Uh, the Lord's heaven, but the earth is given to the children of men. The children of men have, but the, the, God the Father was doing a lot of division. This is one major division when he divided Israel into two sections, the south and the east, two and a half Judah and and uh, uh, and Benjamin, and and the Levite in one, in the side of uh, David and his, his David line. And the ten tribes were divided. What, so the land is for everyone. No, the land is for the Lord. But how to subdivide the land? 
let's read a little bit of uh, Old Testament things and you find, oh, I didn't know all those things. So you get to know God the Father a little bit deeper. In Genesis, the Lord is 15, he said to Abraham, I say unto you, unto your seed I have given this land. From the river of Egypt into the great river, the great river, the river Euphrates. So God gave him a land, he gave him an inheritance, and he gave him a, a territory for it. He was dividing. This is for you. And he confirmed it on Genesis 17, and he said, I will give unto you. And I'm speaking about people who have problem about Israel. I was just reading the other day that people can buy the land, buy prop, buy not land, you buy land and house to it but they can buy a country. Why not? That's not even an offer about all the what's happening in Israel today. And here in, in, uh, in Genesis 17, he in, um, approved it more or uh, I will give it unto you and to your seed after you, the land where you are stranger, all the land of Canaan, everlasting possession. I will be their God. So God is confirming his gift. Is he giving and he judging? Yes, he is. Is he dividing? Yes, he is. Is he giving the border? Yes. So why Jesus didn't want to divide the inheritance for that guy? Uh, number 26, he say, unto this, the land shall be divided. <laughs> so why Jesus didn't do it? For an inheritance according to the number of names. So there is number of names. How big is your or how big is your need? How big should be your inheritance? This is the way God uh, divides the things. In the number, he said, number 26, to many you shall give the more inheritance. You found like into the, the tribe of uh, Joseph, there was uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim was bigger and he even he was the younger. So he had to go for um, more and Joseph was taken more because he is more uh, souls or more people into his families than the other. So God was doing that division that way. Uh, many shall give the more inheritance and the too few. See, there is, there is something too many and, the, and, and some too few. Many should be given the more inheritance. If you're many people, you take the more inheritance. But how about if you're few? you shall give the less inheritance. Something very strange. You, as if you never heard of this wisdom before. To everyone shall his inheritance be given according to those that they were numbered of him. So if you are, in, you know, 10 people into the your tribe, but if you are, you know, your husband and, and a child, you're three, you know, uh, there is proportion. The many people shall be given more inheritance. The less people, the less inheritance. I didn't try this. It's the Lord in number 26. Yeah, you start to know how God think. And it's a little bit similar to what he said, you know, the one who, uh, who work more, the one who come with the 10 talents was given the one talent that this guy didn't work with. Why he didn't give it to the three? The more you work, the more you get. The more um, having ability to reproduce, the more God will bless you with more. He was not working with the division of men. Give, give to the three talents. One, he will be four, and the other will be five. No. He give to the one five talents, give him five again, he will be ten, and one more, he will be eleven. And the other one will be three, and three will be six. That's the way that the kingdom of God operates. You work more, you be blessed more, and your works will follow you. So don't think, you know, um, when he was say, um, look at the lilies, he was, no, don't worry about it. Oh, just live like a vagabond. Live like the hippies. You don't worry about, oh, let's kiss and hug and whatever and live an, um, a careless life. He didn't say that. He never said that. Every moment of your life is either eternal or eternally wasted. Think of that. Because if we think that God will divide the inheritance and whatever, as we said, eternally. You look at the things which are going to last, eternal values. Good for you. Then you have to live and measure your life in a different way. What is eternal that I should invest my life into? Is it gold? Let me gather more gold if gold is eternal. But if gold is not eternal, then don't worry about it and find what is eternal. That you can accumulate more of it. 
more souls, bigger family of God related to you, the bigger your inheritance and your blessing. But what you did here on this earth, it doesn't really count. It does count. And you see, God is never going to be uh, negligent when he see this. So for me, I was like for a full week thinking, why Jesus did reject the guy who was asking him, Master, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. They will make me your divider or your judge. We do not know the Lord. We don't understand his thinking. But if we do know him, you, our values of living will be. So if the market is for gold, go and gather more gold. If the market is for silver, go and gather more silver. But if the market is for none of them, because none of them is of eternal value, then go and search what is eternal. Word of God is eternal. So if you sit there and invest in you, the eternal word of God, that's eternal. But don't be like the red, the Dead Sea. You go in, in and no out. Because the life of God cannot be contained into a Dead Sea. It has to go. The flow of the love of God. When you, you bless others, you be blessed. You more bless others, the flow uh, go. The healing will go. Uh, the, the finances will go. It's God who needs you, know, you know, to be a vessels of blessing and a channel of grace for others. That's where you can understand the, the, the calculation and the mess that God is doing. And you start to adjust your uh, natural life or your uh, this life with what God's thinking and what is valuable for him. We go to another one, uh, Deuteronomy 32. And I'm going to tell you about really God was dividing the land. Very interesting. When most high divide the nations, their inheritance. So there were certain times Moses was telling us that God divides the inheritance and the nation. When he separated the sons of Adam, he said the bounds of people according. I mean, this is gonna be Australia, this is gonna be New Zealand, this is gonna be Africa, this is gonna be Egypt, this is Philippines, this is India, whatever. He put like a mark around, no one can go even. Um, when he separated the son of man, he said bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Very interesting. So it's all about the number of people that you gather into your tribe or into your family. The Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So God decide out of all the word, I'm going to take lot as my inheritance. Fine. He found him in the desert. So David, uh, Jacob was lost in the desert and God find him. And the waste uh, howling wilderness, he led him about and instructed him and he kept him as the apple of his eyes. So out of all my children or grandchildren or all the creation that I created, I want that guy to be mine. And his name is Jacob. But here is something very interesting. I think only the people who speak Arabic will value that Bible verse. And I may have for you a picture. I hope I do. Where is the picture? Where is my picture? I always have to search for it. Maybe I didn't put it. That was one better. This one is not the best picture, you know. Uh, so God put boundaries. God put boundaries. Uh, yeah, there was one picture with uh, the continent. Sorry, I didn't probably put it. And into a bear, Gen Genesis 6, were born two sons. The name of one is Felig. And if you know the word Felig, if look, al -hagar, it means he cut it and divide it till the core. This is where really I believe on that moment where God separate, you know, the, the, the continent and make, you know, Africa here and America and Australia and he fell again, for in his day was the earth divided in, and his brother's name was Jotkem. On that time, 
the earth was one and it was divided, phallic. Cut, 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 separate. I found that interesting because we're talking about the division of the land. Genesis 10 is saying, and these are the family of Noah, sons of Noah, generation and their nation. And by this, the nation divided the earth after the flood. So that phallic is the, the, the place when God, boom, it's like he bombard the earth and make division of the continent. But after that, into the verse 32, when he divide the lands and put border for each country. I was reading in the morning about a certain nation who disappeared and was very, very interesting. It was in the news. They're not existing anymore, or at least their names or their existence. And, and, you, and you think if God make places disappear, you think he's joking what those warning in the Bible, either on an individual level or nation level, do you think, you know, he likes to speak big words to make you frightened or are you going to do what he said that he will do? Take it, brother and sister. Don't continue to be living into that, uh, you know, la-la land because there is many, many places not existing. Many, many, that article was... Uh, uh, 22 countries that disappear from the world believe it or not uh, one of them you know the Soviet Union is not existing anymore very interesting and and uh, East Germany not existing any Egypt we had a name I didn't even know see here uh, United Arab of Republic from that time this name was given to us instead of being Egypt and Copt and all that and, and many many other nations but I mean I, that was in the news this article found it very interesting and one which I really uh, appreciate him he was so good he was doing an African he was doing animal ah, that one no not that one he was doing animal uh, a human sacrifice uh, and state in America and, and in Europe, many places were disappeared. Very interesting. Let me show you that guy who was interesting, the African guy. He was doing human sacrifice. Oh, that's him. Uh, Kingdom of Dahom on that time is holding annual ritual celebration that involved mass human sacrifice. You look like he loved his drugs so much. Powerful man. So you can see, you know, uh, Egypt changed name, and uh, and and here is Germany. And I like to collect new news like this in America and uh, and many in Moldavia, <laughs> in Europe, many nations, Sardinia. Those are places and nations where they're not anymore. This one too uh, in Africa. This is the one in Africa. Very interesting. And here in Spain, Portugal, uh, Czech, Czech Republic, uh, Yugoslavia is, is not existing anymore as a nation, what it was. And of course, Venice and things like that. So what we're trying to say is like God will do what he say he will do. And he's dividing. So why Jesus didn't divide? Sorry, I don't have an answer till now. Maybe by the end I will, maybe I will not. But uh, we are here, the same idea that God was dividing, go to the New Testament, like I said, the, the unity of the word of God. In, in Acts 17, he said that um, has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. God decide before you come, the time of where you're going to live and what is the boundary of the places before the time comes. So God is dividing. God the Father was dividing and all the time. There is a place called the redemption of property in Leviticus 25. Very interesting that God will redeem the land. The land shall not be sold forever for the land is mine. I didn't study it very um, uh, details, but um, it looks like the land will be restored to the owner. 
he can purchase it, uh, can come back to, to him. And if he cannot, because there is no second king or whatever, until the, the jubilee, it will return to the owner. So God has laws. And the, the law of the land and the, that belong to him and the way that he divided, it's really important. And, and here God is very angry on the book of Joel from the people who will divide Israel. Uh, and, he, and he said, parted my land in the Arabic, it means Qasim Ardi, it means they divided my land. Uh, and I can go on and on. I'll take one or two and then we go to other things. And here is in Jeremiah, the Lord against all my evil neighbors. That's those neighbors, this Arab neighborhood, who are really touching the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Jeremiah 12. Muslim people around, listen carefully to this word because we said that if you hate Israel, hate it as you like, but that's not God's opinion. It's the, the people that he select from among the whole nations of the world. It's his inheritance. So don't be an enemy with the inheritance of God. It's your loss. But he said, if you touch his inheritance, huh, have caused my people Israel to inherit, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. That's very, very uh, uh, clear word. And don't think you have any of the called prophet or whatever can save you with these promises that God made. He will pluck you. <laughs> and Jeremiah here, 49, he say, the Lord that I will cause an alarm more. Alarm, bah! you know, like when you have that alarm coming, we had that into the shopping center today. Evacuate now. And uh, and then he said, then shall Israel be hair unto them that they wear hair is hair. So if you take the things of Israel, God will take your hair and give it back to them. Jeremiah 49. So I made my point that father was dividing everything. Listen here, there is eternal values that you and I cannot change. It's not like, oh, it didn't happen to me, so the word of God is not right, or maybe not in this occasion. No, that's eternal word. And what? It's Proverbs 13 from Solomon. A good man leave an inheritance to his children. Children means grandchildren. And the wealth of the th sinner has led up to the just. And be careful here, led up for the just, not part of it. That's why you won't divide. All the wealth of the sinner will be translated to transfer to the just. That's why you're not going to divide. You want a portion, but you're not. God is not dividing. He's going to give it to you all. In, in, in 25, he said, the righteous eat to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want and and you think why god didn't come to rescue me you know when i needed him there was an injustice happening to me into that job or into that business or into that transaction why he didn't indicate why he didn't um, give me my rights but listen those are eternal promises and i want you to repeat it to yourself eternal promises God will not say, oh, let me try, not with this guy, but try it with that guy. There are eternal promises. No jokes about them. And here God, uh, you know, um, revealed that uh, part of which was, um, I was very, very blessed. Because you think about the inheritance and all that, like the land, like we, show, we saw, or your house, or part of the gold of your parents, whatever, whatever, whatever. But no. Do you know what is in here, your inheritance? Let me show you the eternal inheritance set from Daniel 7 three times. Wonderful. And according to the scripture, God has an appointed day when he will transfer the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. Not necessarily today or into the living time, but all the wealth will be translated. Does he don't divide? All the wealth. Not your side. If you're the fifth or the, the half or whatever, he's going to give you half. No, that is a full transfer, 
full account transfer. Uh, so this is three blessing, which I never thought that he's talking about materialistic uh, possession because we're, our mind is materialistic. But see what's the mind of God and his promises. But the saint of the Most High shall receive the kingdom. Wow. They possess the kingdom forever and ever. And is this the portion of your inheritance that you're after? And I'm not trying to tell you that, oh, you're going to die and go to heaven. That's good for you. No, no, no. I'm not that person. We're not going to die and go to heaven. Sorry. We're going to come and rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. And it will be given to us according to what we try into that rehearsal of life. You will receive the kingdom. You will possess the kingdom. Daniel 7.21 And Daniel was saying, And a judgment had made in favor of the saint of the Most High. And the time came. There is a time appointed by God that that wealth transfer will happen. It's not like the uh, uh, television, the Christian television, uh, uh, money hungry people. Oh, I saw this and after that, God sent me on the mail. Oh, I, I put this and I got, please, please, please. You make God like money and, and, and it's not that. There is a time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. You possess the whole kingdom of God. Why you want a slice of the pizza when you want to give it all to you? Daniel 7, 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saint of the most high. Listen to this, children of God, because this is here where you possess everything taken from you and, and the wealth will be totally and completely transferred. It's an everlasting kingdom. It's an everlasting possession of something that you even never dreamt of. It's a kingdom of God on earth. It's a kingdom where the ruling will be by the word of God, the truth of God, the love of God, the gospel, the Torah. People will go in and ask God to teach them the ways uh, that he wants. There is that last uh, one. But before then, we missed one here. Let's see what it was talking about. That one? No, we did that one. So, uh, yeah, so this is here the thing. Uh, Jesus will be the judge over things which are e everlasting. Yeah, fine. Uh, I will not disagree about that. But do you think God will intervene into your life? You know, uh, it means he's the judge for the... Uh, uh, the widow and the lost their fa fathers, what they call it, and the orphans. So he will not wait for the next life to be judged for them, you know. Qadi, Qadi means he will judge for them. So God, is he judging later on? Jesus will judge later on in life, on the eternal life that will be in heaven, or he will judge now? Those who are wise will understand the significance and difference between a temporal blessing and eternal. Of course, you know, you can uh, claim for eternal and live peacefully. So you don't want to really uh, worry too much. Uh, and, and he said here in Luke that we were reading. So is he, then he, after he gave the parable. So he, is he, after he spoke about the, the, the rich who is full rich, that's the end of the conclusion Jesus gave, the last verse of that paragraph. So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. When God is everything in you, the things on this earth is different for you again. So let me go to the conclusion, which really, really make me there. Because after all this, I was not confident to speak about that topic. Because I didn't have an answer. Why? Jesus didn't want to divide and judge righteously to that man. But see here, he did it once, and, and I always use that example. He used it once with Adam, and if he put them in eternal joy in his presence, and they didn't appreciate it, it was the first trial, they were out of it. But this one was a guy, God bless him, I don't know who he is, 
But when I read his word, I said, this is words to be preached. The, God gave the inheritance to the, um, the prodigal son. I heard into the church hundreds of prodigal son preaching. But God gave him the inheritance when he asked for it. And he was not ready to manage the kingdom of God. He was not ready. He had an inheritance coming, but he was driven by his lust to demand it now. You have an inheritance to come. That kingdom. But you want it now. God give it once to that child, the prodigal son, and make him lose his way. And he will not do it again. I promise that he will not do it again. He will not get people like Adam and Eve. They be tempted from first temptation and cast out of his presence. He will not do that again. So when God decide that he will not in, uh, cut the, the uh, divide the inheritance now, because he wants you to be more mature and capable of managing that inheritance. When, with the, the prodigal son, when he went and he was hungry and, and desire even to eat the pig's food, when he came to his father, now he was ready. On that time, he was ready to receive the kingdom, not before. Before, he was just like a, a spoiled kid. He just wanted to go and do whatever things are not supposed to be done. So this story, it will not be repeated. And that's my answer for that question, if you think that's a good answer. And a father will not going to transfer our inheritance until the eternity. He in, eternally obliterates our ability to spoil it. It means cut all the way in you that you're going to spoil the inheritance of God. Then he will give it to you. Uh, it may be a philosophy for certain people of you. You may in, in, uh, understanding uh, what I was saying, but if not, may the Holy Spirit will give you what you need to know. But if you're not ready for the inherit the kingdom, you will not inherit it now. He has no pleasure for you to take it and go and spoil your life as happened with the prodigal son. So how we know that we are ready to receive the kingdom? Uh, it, uh, we are ready to receive the kingdom with the resurrection of our bodies. Because if our resurrection life of God call upon us and we respond by resurrection, it means we are ready to go for the millennium and, uh, and live the life uh, doing all the things higher. He's taking you to way, way higher uh, place that you never even dream that it's yours. Why is that? Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. So as long as you are into your humanity, dealing with things with a human level, you know, I was listening to the mess the other on Sunday and some Bible, uh, you know, some singing disturbed me to the core. They were saying that Mary lost her humanity. And I don't know if this is something that we can say. But I don't agree about it on the time. And I still don't agree about it. But until you lose all the, the, the human nature with its lustful desires, then you're ready to inherit the eternal kingdom of the saints that God promised. But when you still wanted to go and like the prodigal son take your share, you don't have a share, brother and sister. You have a whole kingdom. Think of the second brother was thinking, oh, he take off my share now and share it with my brother. How unfair is that? There is no such thing. You have totally, completely uh, ruling into the whole kingdom. I don't know how is that. I don't comprehend it yet. But that's what the word of God is showing it going to be. So flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Corinthians 15, the chapter of the resurrection. But I'll tell you a mystery. We will not sleep, but we will change in a moment, in a twinkle of the light, the last trump. The trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptibly. If you want, we hear the trump and get raised. You are now gonna go to your internal uh, inheritance and shall be and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put in corruption 
put on in corruption. So our uh, you know, way to be corrupted will be, will have the righteousness robe over it. And this mortal must put immortality. How wonderful those precious words that you don't even comprehend them. It's too, you know, overwhelming the words and the meaning for it. It is not more wise to us to demand the distribution of our inheritance before the time. It's not that wise because we are to, uh, we nearly finish. We're going to do the same as the prodigal son did. He was not prepared and neither you are or me. We are not either prepared yet, but the time will come on the resurrection of your body when everything is done with you then you will be able to get that eternal inheritance. Demanding the wealth of the wicked before the time is not healthy for us. It makes us like that prodigal son and we're going to deal with the flesh part of our soul. We're not going to deal with the spiritual part of our being. So the proverb says 13 again, eternal promises, brother and sister, not only of the kingdom, but the good man leave an inheritance to his children, children, and the wealth of the thinner is stored. So if you're not receiving it yet, it is stored for you for the righteous. Are you the righteous that the wealth is stored for you or are the sinner that there will be wealth transfer? We immediately notice that the scripture says sinners, wealth is presented, is stored up for the righteous. It does not say anything about the distribution or the slice of pizza. You will have the whole thing. So brother and sister, I just want to wish people who are uh, celebrating Hanukkah this time. Uh, Hanukkah is for the Christian people is as close to the Christmas. It's uh, the feast of the light. I was thinking it's a great feast until I discovered something again. It was an article into the news, which make me really think very, very deeply. Uh, that story of Hanukkah, it is not written into the Torah. It's written into the, the Catholic books, uh, Catholic Bible. Uh, it's in uh, the Maccabean 1 and 2, after the destruction of the temple. And if you know the story, it was the, the lamb or the, the oil should stay for one day, stay eight days. That's why they put eight uh, lamps eight, and, and put light in everyone every day. But the story here, are you celebrating the destruction of the temple? That's something very, very strange. And the other question is for the Jews. I, want, I would like someone to answer me this. Are you celebrating uh, uh, the book of the Christian when this story is not really canonized into your Torah, how can you celebrate that, that celebration? You know, there is two celebrations identical to the Krishna, Christian Christmas, and that's uh, the, the Feast of the Light or Hanukkah. And, uh, and the other one is the uh, al uh, uh, Passover, which is like the, the uh, Easter, but I don't like the word Easter. I say the resurrection, as we say, the Qiyamah in the Arabic. The resurrection feast. So these are the two events. So they are trying to copy us into this and taking the rabbi, how dare you to take a, from the book of the Christian? And if you dare to take, and if it's okay to take a feast from the book of the Christian, why you didn't take the whole thing? Remember, brother and sister, into Jewish faith, if I'm brother or sister to you, that those who wrote the Bible, the, the New Testament are Jews, and Jesus is the Messiah. The only Messiah who all the fulfillment of prophecy about him. So today, the Messiah, they ask him, Master, why you don't tell my brother, talking to the Jews now and the Arabs, why do not let him divide the land? Israel, the land is promised to you, whole of it. Not slice of the pizza, but the whole pizza. And God is going to make a transfer of the, the, the money or the, the, the wealth of the sinner to the wealth of the unsinner. And if you get this, that teaching and see how God is dealing Arab and Jews um, into that teaching, it's exactly described the way it was. If they are the righteous, the apple of God's eyes, the one that he found you in the desert, he will give you the whole thing. 
God is about inheritance, is about land, about Israel, about his people. The when they receive their Messiah, and only when you receive your Messiah, then Israel is now uh, capable of leading the whole world in the truth and receiving the kingdom, which will last forever. May God bless you all. And happy Hanukkah.